I'm Robin Higgins, and this is Molecular Compounds versus Ionic Compounds Conductivity. All right, so let's take a look at an example of a molecular compound versus an ionic compound and see what has better conductivity. So up here, let's have our molecular compound. And what that means is that it all has covalent bonds. So a good example is sugar. Remember, a covalent bond is a bond between two atoms that completely share their electrons, and it's usually two nonmetals. An ionic bond is something with one metal, one nonmetal, and there are complete charge separations. So if we have our sugar molecules, and we have a couple here, so sugar is usually a bunch of carbons and a bunch of OH groups. Now sugar is completely soluble in water. That's because it definitely has polar areas. You have electronegative oxygens, you have lone pairs that are able to interact with water. So if we have, just to draw out a water molecule, you're going to have interactions between this positively, partial positively charged hydrogen and this partial negative oxygen. So all of these guys will completely dissolve because there are intermolecular forces in between sugar and water. Uh, but let's look down at ionic. And so a great example of ionic compound is salt or sodium chloride. So in solution, sodium chloride completely dissociates into positively charged sodium and negatively charged chlorine. So. Let's draw a bunch of these guys around, and they're not bonded to each other at all anymore. They've dissociated. So now when you have your water mo molecules, there are definitely still interactions between this partial positive oxygen, I mean partial negative oxygen, and completely positive sodium. And again, interactions between partial positive hydrogen and completely negative chlorine. And so what we're trying to look at is which one of these two solutions is going to have better conductivity. And conductivity is how we measure the flow of electrons. And remember, electrons are completely negatively charged. Um, and for something to be a conductor, you basically, if we like hooked an air, uh, a wire up to the sides of our solutions, we could measure the voltage and see which one is having a better flow of electrons. And so if we look at these, uh, and just think about the charges we have. In this, we have complete charges. And in this, everything's pretty neutral. You don't have actual charges. And this is why ionic compounds are much better conductors than molecular or covalent compounds, because you already have a separation of charges. So an electron could easily hop along this solution and get to the other side, be a good conductor, whereas this molecular compound really couldn't do that it really, if you have an electron here, it will eventually get to the other side, but it's not an environment where it's really easy to do that, like the ionic solution. I'm Robin Higgins, and this is Conductivity in Molecular Compounds versus Ionic Compounds.